Hi, my name is Melissa and I'm a second year medical student here at the University of Rochester and I'm here to show you how my iPad works. Um, so the first thing we usually do is set it up. We have a little keyboard here and here we have the iPad which we can put right in there. So you'll see here we can get the internet just like we would on a normal computer. We get our email as well. Uh, we have a reader application where we can put all of our syllabus material on from Classroom. We also have an application where we can make flashcards uh, from our study material. And then we can do PowerPoint, we have different writing tools. I share recipes with my mom and check the baseball scores. So let me show you how we might use the iPad in class. So we have an application called Goodreader, and this is where we have our entire syllabus. It's our um, all of our class note materials. You can see that there are slides here that we use and we're able to take notes on them. It's very interactive. You can underline, you can highlight, and then you can use your keyboard to write various notes here. So you might remember what it used to be like, which is when we had these very large syllabi. And this is only volume one, so you can imagine carrying three of these in your backpack on the way to class. We have an application called Study Blue, which you'll see here. And this is an app where you can create different flashcards. And you can see we've made some here for neuropathology. And you can flip them and put one thing on one side and then the answers on the other. You can then say if you were right or wrong and it will keep track of your percentages. So it's a really great way to study. You can share your cards with your friends. So you guys remember the day of problem-based learning or PBL. And we now have all of that on our iPad. So you probably remember getting handouts and different pieces of paper but you'll now see that we're able to open it here. So this was a 45-year-old gentleman uh, who experienced some chest discomfort, and we were given the case, and you can see that we were able to highlight uh, on the page. We were given some information about his chest x-ray, his CBC, and then we actually have his EKG provided as well. We were analyzing his EKG rhythm, and this becomes very interactive. You can actually draw on it. So we were looking here, we saw a little bit of a inverted T wave. We have all sorts of textbooks on here. First aid, which we've been studying as second years for the boards. And this is a big textbook normally, but we have it all here on our iPad. So now let me show you some of my favorite apps. One of the most convenient apps is called Lab Values. And if you're ever in class and they talk about a specific lab value, this is at the touch of my fingertip. And this gives all the normal values for all the different labs that we study in medical school. So you can see here we have it broken up by different organ systems and then you can actually look at them and see a full reference uh, value range. You can see a lab description. Another favorite app that we use this year in our mind bearing behavior class is called 3D Brain. So you're able to move the brain, isolate it. It's obviously color coded. And then you can actually look at different structures in particular which might be inside the brain. So check this out. If we go to structures and we want to see specifically, let's say, the dentate gyrus, we can click on that and then you can see it there. So one more, and this is actually an app I just used last week in my preceptor's office. And he, we had a patient that came in with a rash and he said, well, Melissa, where's your iPad? Let's diagnose them. And we have this incredible app called Visual DX. And it was actually created at the University of Rochester. And it's an entire collection of different uh, dermatology diagnoses that you can make. So let's say we have an adult come in with a skin rash. So you can pick adults. And then you can characterize the lesion. Was it multiple? Was it single? The different ages of patients. And then you can add different visual findings of the rash, body locations. And this allows for an incredible um, diagnostic potential of different things that might be going on in that patient. And then you can see if you decide that it's one of these, then you can get more information about diagnoses, about therapy, and test to order to confirm your uh, suspicions. So in laboratories, we can go on to a database of images that we use in pathology. Now this is a clip of the lung, and you can see here, this is a slide, which we might also look at under a microscope. And we're actually able to look at it under different magnifications by just clicking here on the iPad, even down to the cellular layer. And now I hope you understand why I look like this when I first got my iPad.